Hello everyone, this is Ultimate Academy's team presenting Onyx Financial Track. Um, this is lecture number 9 and today we will talk about general ledger transactions. Uh, let's get right into it. So the first screen that we have is going to be debit note. In the screen we have two tabs, master details and also additional data. We'll go through master details first. Alright, so we'll bring up the tab and first of all we'll click on add. Then we will select the branch from the branch drop down menu. Then we will select the note type. We'll go with vendors notes, which we have already added from the notes type screen. Then we have the note number and note date. Uh, so both of them will be filled in automatically. In the account number field, we will press F9 to determine or to select the account that we will use this note for. It will go with foreign vendors and after we select the account it will automatically bring up the accounts name in the relevant field and if we have a detailed account for this one we can select it from the detailed account um, field by pressing F9 to bring up the list okay so in the currency field uh, you will see the currency that is linked to this account which we have already added in the chart of account screen. In the lower section we have a field for the description which we can either fill in or the system will fill it in for us automatically. Alright so we have two fields for the notes amount local and also foreign. If we're adding the amount using the local currency we'll add it in the local field However, if it's in a foreign currency, then we'll add it in the foreign currency field. Here, the account that we chose is only linked to the local currency, which is why the system highlighted the local currency in yellow, which means that it's mandatory. Then we have status. After we save, we can change the status from the approval icon. We will have to change it, of course, to approved. And when you change the status to approved, it will open up a new window, approval status. We'll click on, we'll click on the arrow and um, we'll choose approved, of course. It will automatically add all the fields except the approved description, which you can um, basically add the description that you want. So you'll hit save and we're good to go. As for the additional... Um, the additional data tab, uh, you will have a few empty fields which you can utilize however you want. Notice that after you saved, the status field will say approved. Alright, uh, so we'll move on to the next screen which is credit note. It's literally the same as the previous screen uh, except that in this one the note type we have is credit, not debit. And you can apply the same set of rules that we've established in the previous screen to fill in the details in this one. We'll move on to the screen after that, which is journal voucher request. We use the screen to create a journal voucher request for users who do not have the privilege uh, on the system to create one themselves. The screen is going to be divided into two sections, main data and detailed data. In the main data, we'll find three tabs, master details, import from file, and additional data. Additional data is empty fields in case you want to add or record any more information that you will need. And import from file helps us upload the journal voucher on the system through an Excel sheet. You will click on add and then import from file. In file type, by the way, you can select either Excel or text file. Of course, we will choose Excel for this one. Then we will select the Excel path. Alright, so after we have determined the Excel path, uh, we will choose the actual Excel sheet uh, that we will import the data from. Then we will click on import from Excel. And also, by the way, the system will give you tips on how to create that Excel file. Alright, so now let's talk about master details. From this tab, we can directly create a journal voucher request. So, 
uh, we'll click on add first of all and then select the branch then document type is gonna be general the document number and date will both be uh, filled in or added automatically uh, then you will need to add the reference number and the number of attachment as well in the field right next to it and in batch value we will write the total amount of the journal voucher request the rest of the fields in this screen are optional but we will talk a little bit more about fill in data we can choose uh, from fill in data to fill in the data for the journal voucher request from debit or credit notes if we will manually fill in the table we will start with the account number press f9 to choose the account and if this account has a detailed account we'll add it in the relevant field as well the name of the account is added automatically and you can just add any notes or description in the description field the currency and exchange rate as well come up automatically according to the account that you've selected then we will uh, record the value of the transaction in the credit or debit fields and the following row we will record the second party's data the same way uh, that we have entered the data in the row before that one all right as for the calculator button that we have on the right that one is just linked to uh, the calculator that you have on your PC so if you click on it it will just open up a calculator if we want to reverse the journal voucher in the closing period, we will activate the variable reverse when period closes. We do have another variable here, which is periodical journal voucher. Uh, this one is to make the journal voucher uh, repeatable in every accounting period. After we save, we'll find that the status is notes approved. Uh, we can change it by clicking on approval and we'll follow the same steps that we went through before if you did not change the status to approved by the way you will not be able to post it so uh, that means that it will have zero effect on the accounts the next screen is payment voucher request uh, that screen is also going to be divided into two sections main data which has four tabs master details additional data default data and import from file so all the tabs are similar to what we've explained in the previous screen journal voucher request uh, the only new addition is default data all the fields in this tab are optional we can add the currency exchange rate cost center project and activity we can also add a description um, and record the reference number and the check number we'll move on to master details we can choose whether the payment is going to be cash in hand or cash in bank in case we choose cash we will add the safe number in the cash number field however if we choose bankable the cash number field will turn into bank number to add the cash number or the safe number I mean or the bank number you will click on the field press F9 to view the banks or the safes that you've already added and you will select the correct one or the one that you want alright so if we activate standby the whole transaction will be put on standby until we uncheck this variable of course we have to approve the entire transaction or else it is not going to be posted all right, so um, receipt voucher request is the same exact details as payment voucher request, except that it's the opposite. So in payment voucher and receipt voucher, we perform the same steps as the ones we did in the payment voucher request and receipt voucher request, except that we can install the payment voucher and the receipt voucher as well from in different things including of course payment and receipt requests all right so now we will talk about exchange currency request we'll go through the main data first 
All right, so we'll find that additional data tab uh, in case, of course, you want to add any more data that is not already mentioned or created in Master Details tab. In Master Details, we will select the branch. Voucher number will be added automatically. I'm sorry, manually, actually, in this one. <laughs> we will have to type it down. Detailed account uh, has the options cash, customer, and vendors. So if you choose vendor, then in the following field, you will press F9 and it will show you the actual existing vendors that we've already added from the vendors detail screen. When it comes to currency though, if the vendor we chose is linked to more than one currency, we will be able to view all the linked currency in this window. We'll select the currency. Then in amount, we will just punch in the amount. If the currency is foreign, the system will populate a field with the name of this currency, by the way. Um, as for the exchange rate, this one will come up automatically according to the exchange rate that we have determined in the currency setup screen. Receipt type is going to be general. And now let's um, check out the table that we have in the screen here. Alright, so we will press F9 in the account number field and a window will pop up showing us that the account that is linked with the vendor that we've selected in the upper section or the master details once you click on enter it will automatically fill in the detailed account and the name in the currency we will select the currency that we're exchanging to you will type in the amount in the debit field if it's a local currency um, but if it's a foreign currency then it's going to be in debit foreign of course, do not forget to save and change the status to approved and follow the process or the path that we've already went through in the previous screens. This screen is exchange currency request and everything that we've just discussed is also applicable for another screen, uh, which is exchange currency screen. The only difference is that we can install the transactions in exchange currency from exchange currency request. And also, by the way, the journal voucher screen is similar to a journal voucher request. The difference is also that we can build the transaction based on journal voucher request. Uh, post data check, auto and manual will be postponed for now. Um, and we'll talk about them in upcoming lectures, though. So this is everything that we have for this lecture today. Thank you so much for listening. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you guys again in the upcoming lectures.